Hello friends, and welcome back to another video of Vicky's Informational Talk. Today we're going to be learning what an iceberg is and how they're named. Along with this, we're also going to be learned, learning about how icebergs are classified and who names them. If you guys want any other topics similar to this, be sure to type it in the comment section down below. I'll try my best to make a video on it. And while you're down there, be sure to also hit that subscribe button and like the video. But as always, let's get into this topic. Okay guys, so now I'm going to tell you guys where I got this idea from. Well, it's actually really simple. This month, a massive chunk of ice broke off of Antarctica, and it's now the largest iceberg in the world. What did they name it? Its name was A76. So, I thought to myself, hmm, why is this name A76? They could have named it Antarctica King, they could have named it Iceberg King, they could have named it a banana, it wouldn't matter. But why did they name it A76? So, A76 was first spotted by a British Antarctic Survey researcher on May 13th. It was then confirmed by the U.S. National Ice Center, the next day using images from the Sentinel-1A satellite. The iceberg first broke off from the western edge of the Ron Ice Shelf, which is located in Antarctica's Weddell Sea, according to the European Space Agency. It is 89 nautical miles long by 14 nautical miles wide, and according to the USNIC, it has an area of 1,668 square miles. It's approximately three times as big as India's capital, New Delhi, which is crazy. Okay guys, after learning about the world's largest iceberg, A76, you might be curious to learn why it was named A76. But before we can get into that topic, we have to learn what makes an iceberg an iceberg. So, as we all know, icebergs are large chunks of ice that break off of glaciers. This process is called calving. Icebergs float in the ocean, but they're made of frozen freshwater, not salt water. Most icebergs in the northern hemisphere break off from glaciers in Greenland. Sometimes they drift south with currents into the North Atlantic Ocean. Icebergs also calve from glaciers in Alaska. In the southern hemisphere, almost all icebergs calve from the continent of Antarctica. Some icebergs are small, bergy bits are floating sea ice that stretch no more than 5 meters or 16.5 feet above the ocean. Growlers are even smaller. Icebergs can also be huge at the same time. Some icebergs near Antarctica can be as big as the Sicily, the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea. As little as one-eighth of an iceberg is visible above the water, which is crazy. Most of the mass of an iceberg lies below the surface of the water. This is where the phrase tip of the iceberg came from, meaning only part of an idea or problem is known. There are many different kinds of icebergs. Brash ice, for instance, is a collection of floating ice and icebergs no more than 2 meters across. A tabular berg is a flat-topped iceberg that usually forms as ice breaks directly off an ice sheet or ice shelf. The ice below the water is very dangerous to ships. The sharp hidden ice can easily tear a hole in the bottom of a ship. A particularly treacherous part of the North Atlantic has come to be known as Iceberg Alley because of the high number of icebergs that find their way there. Iceberg Alley is located 250 miles east and southeast of Newfoundland, Canada. Okay guys, now we're gonna go back to where we talked about how icebergs were very dangerous to ships. So how do ships navigate through icebergs and stay safe. Iceberg patrols now use GPS, Global Positioning System, technology to help locate icebergs and prevent more tragedies like the Titanic. In 1999, the National Ice Center lost track of an iceberg the size of Rhode Island itself. It was found drifting toward the Drake Passage, an important shipping route south of Argentina. Dr. David Long of NASA's SeaWinds science team used satellite data to track the iceberg, the first time satellite technology was used for that purpose. And since that time, the SeaWinds team has used satellites to track the world's ice. Icebergs that drift into warmer waters eventually melt. Scientists estimate the lifespan of an iceberg from first snowball of an, on a glacier 
to finally melting in the ocean to be as long as 3,000 full years, which is crazy. Okay guys, now that we're finally done with all of that, we're gonna get into the main topics of who names icebergs and how icebergs are named. The U.S. National Ice Center is a multi-agency operational center operated by the United States Navy, the National Ocean Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and the United States Coast Guard. It's the only organization that monitors all Antarctic icebergs worldwide, though they must be larger than 1,900 meters along at least one axis in order to be monitored. The USNIC provides global ice analysis and forecasts and more than 95% of the data used in its sea ice analysis are derived from the remote sensors on polar orbiting satellites. This information is invaluable for scientists who study icebergs, who are able to learn more about climate and ocean processes and ships traversing the Antarctic waters are informed of any icebergs which might pose a danger along their journey. The USNIC also names all icebergs that it tracks. Iceberg names are de derived from the Antarctic quadrant in which they were originally sighted, divided in the fo following manner. A, quadrant A, is 0 to 90 west. Quadrant B is 90 west to 180. Quadrant C is 180 to 90 east and quadrant D is 90 east to zero. They are then assigned a number in the order in which they are discovered. The first iceberg to calve in the Amundsen Eastern Ross Sea would be named B1, because that is located in, in quadrant B. If that iceberg broke into two larger pieces, it would be assigned a letter at the end of its name. So if iceberg B1 broke split into two parts, it'd be B1A and B1B, and so on and so forth. Well guys, that'll be it for this video. I hope you guys learned something new. And if you have, make, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you haven't already, go check out my last video. It was about the world's largest container ships. Link in the description down below.